First one. This is an equation to solve it. You just need a little bit of algebra, right? You can see um, Jake. Jake, you put this up, didn't you? Yeah. Yep, Jake's given us some working here, which is fantastic. What's the very first thing that he's done on the first line? You can see it. Added one to both. <laughs> That's cheeky. He has, um, he's added one to both sides. He's added one to both sides. No numbers have moved anywhere. He's added one to both sides. That seven then becomes an eight. Then he's divided, and that's where he gets his 8 over 3. Thumbs up? Yeah. Did anyone provide their answers 2 and 2 thirds? Anyone? Just left it there? No, I'm happy. That's cool. All right. We'll come back to this one because no one has volunteered an answer for it just yet, so that's all right. Let's have a look at this graph that Waze has given us. y equals 2x minus 1. Now, I hurried him off from the whiteboard before he provided a scale, but you can see he's very consistently made it one mark is one unit, right? One mark is one unit, yep. So you can see that this point here, what do we call that? Where the graph intersects with this axis? What do we call that? The y-intercept. What is its value? Negative one. Is that what it should be? How can you tell that it should be? Have a look. Yep. Okay, fantastic. If you substitute zero into x, you get y equals 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. Another shortcut way is that I've given this equation to you in slope-intercept form. So the intercept is right there. I mean, you can work it out the way Agni worked out, which is you have to know how to do that. But because I've given it to you in this convenient way, you can actually just read it off. Um, what about the 2? We know what the negative 1 does. What does the 2 do? Yeah, very good. So it tells you the gradient. It makes it steeper, which is why if we went across one unit, uh, like this, one unit to the right, you'd go up two units, and that's where you are. Okay, so that looks like one, one, and you could find that by testing coordinates. Eh, go away. Okay, then we've got the trig questions. Now, trig was the most recent topic, but to be fair, it is the hardest topic that we've ever done. Uh, that's my opinion, anyway. So, have a look. You can see the way that um, Arib, Arib, right? Yep. Uh, how to go with this is you use the sign rule, okay? Now, you guys know when I use the sign rule, I always draw things on my triangles to help me see how to use it properly. What things do I draw? Lines. I draw lines. What kind of lines do I draw? I draw arrows. Thank you. So, A is over here, and Ariba's matched it up with 60 degrees. Why 60? Why not 80 or 40? It's the opposite angle, okay? Then the 10 is matched up with sine 40. Right, or 40 degrees, hence sine 40. So that's how he uses the sine rule. A over sine A equals B over sine B. Does this look right? Does it look like it checks out? Does it look okay? 13.47, do I have agreement? Well done. Okay. So last one, 1B. One I've got enough space over here. Does someone want to walk me through what's the first thing that I write down? I'll give you a tip. It starts with the letter B. Anyone remember it? Base angle. Thank you. I'm trying to work out what values of x will solve this. And I already reminded you right at the beginning that there's more than one. Okay? Uh, I'm going to expect two. Now, the way you get both of those angles is through this guy, the base angle. How do I find the base angle? The base angle is not x. So, yeah, I use shift, right? I go shift, sign, this. Sign inverse of a half. That should give you 30 degrees. Okay, your calculator should tell you that, right? Sine inverse of a half will give you this 30 degree angle. Okay. Now, what do I do with that? No, seriously, what do I do with that? I've got to go somewhere, don't I? Maybe draw a diagram might help you. What do I put on this diagram? All stations to central. Okay, so I'm looking for where sine is. Is this positive or negative? It's positive. So which, which quadrants am I in? First and second. Yeah, are you with me? Is it ringing bells? Okay. So therefore, first and second quadrants. So I want to look at what does the base angle, 30 degrees, what does it look like in those quadrants? That's what x is equal to. Okay. The first quadrant's an easy one. What's, what's 30 look like in the first quadrant? It looks like 30. What about in the second quadrant? It's going to be the supplement of that, right? 180 take away, so it's 150. There you go. 
And sure enough, just like every other equation in the world, you can test whether you got it right by putting your answers into the original equation. Sine 30, we'll give you this. Sine 150, we'll give you that again. Make sense? Yes? Okay, so now um, put your pens down. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through like the 60 second version, maybe 90 second version, of what I asked you to have a look at in the videos, but in case you didn't, because it's not that crazy of an idea. The header you can make, if you haven't made one already, is simultaneous equations. And the simple idea I want to get across to you is this. Write the heading down and then look up because I'm going to point to something on the board and I don't want you to miss it. Okay? I'll just wait till you've uh, had the chance to write those unfortunately long words. I'm going to wait till every eye is locked on the board so you can see what I'm about to show you. Great, we're there. Okay. Simultaneous equations. Look carefully at this particular equation. Let's just get rid of all this other stuff around it. Okay. See this equation? One of the questions I asked you to do was to draw me a picture of it. There it is, right there. Okay. So this equation can be graphed. This equation can be thought of as a line. So if you say simultaneous equations, what you're really thinking about is simultaneous lines. Lines that exist at, what, is, what does simultaneous mean? at the same time, or as we're going to see, in the same place. So here are two equations, right? Uh, they're both from the example in the textbook. These two equations both correspond to lines. Okay, so here they are. Here's one, and here's the other. Okay? Now, if you've got two lines, then where are they simultaneously existing? And the answer is? Yeah, thank you. Right there, both lines exist at the same time, at the same place. Can you read? Look, you've got coordinates. What, what is that point? It's 1-1. One, one. Write that down for me. 1-1. One, one. Now, 1-1 one, one is shorthand, right? It's coordinate shorthand for... What's the first number for? It's an X. And the second number is a Y. So when we just say... 1, 1, what we really mean is x equals 1 and y equals 1 at the same time. But that takes a long time to say, takes a long time to write, and that's why we just do this, because you know how obsessed mathematicians are with short forms. Okay? But you can see that this makes sense of these two equations. If I put them in, they will both work. Let's have a look. 3x plus y equals 4. 1, 1 is on this line. Have a look. What happens to the left-hand side? It becomes, I'll write in a different color, 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 1, because x is 1 and y is 1. And sure enough, that equals 4. What about the other equation? x plus y equals 2. When I substitute that in as well, you get 1 plus 1, which is also simultaneously true. Okay. So that's all this means. That's all it means. 